All right, thanks, guys. Notre Dame's at Wake Forest, 12 o'clock Eastern kickoff. The Irish are the 7.5-point favorites in this matchup at BB&T Field. We've got movement toward the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. They open 6.5 all the way up, a full point to the 7.5-point favorites. Now it's going to be a warm one at Wake Forest. 79 degrees by kickoff, 5-mile-an-hour wind toward the eastern boundary. So if you like the Irish in this matchup here, you may want to act now. i got to imagine this one will close out closer to 9 points by kickoff. And if you like the Demon Deacons, you may want to sit tight and see your number, uh, see if your number will improve. Should be able to get it at at least eight at some point during this week. And when it comes to the trends, this Wake Forest squad has failed to cover the spread in their three matchups on the season. 0-3 ATS for the year. And when it comes to covering the number at home, they haven't been too good against the spread in the friendly confines in the last couple of seasons. 0-5 ATS in their last five at bb &T. Now, scoring-wise, the total has stayed under in all three of Notre Dame's contests on the year. So with all that said and done, I think the Irish should be able to get the job done by at least a touchdown. I'm going to purchase the hook, buy it down, and take the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, minus seven, getting the job done against the spread on the road. And with that said, welcome to the show. Got some lines and personal leans out for college football week four. Wow, can't believe it's week four already. But before we get into some more of that, I just want to remind you to check out my daily best play at patreon.com slash brockpage. And with a documented win percentage of 60% for the entire year of 2017, you're costing yourself valuable information each and every day you're not subscribed. Packages begin at just $1.99 a month. There's also plenty of free content there as well. So once again, please feel free to hit that pause button right now. Open up your browser and just quickly check me out at patreon.com slash brockpage. It'll only take you a few seconds. Link is in the description section below. And if you're a current patron of mine and you're watching this program right now, I just can't thank you enough. You make it all worth it. And without any further, uh, further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at our week four slate of college football lines and personal leans. All starts Eastern Standard Time. And up next, it is going to be Georgia at Missouri, 12 o'clock kickoff. The Bulldogs of Georgia are the 14-point favorites in this matchup here. We're seeing some early money come pouring in on the Bulldogs to cover the number already. It'll be a warm day in Missouri. 76 by kickoff, 8 mile an hour wind toward the eastern boundary. And if you like the Tigers to cover the double digits, you're in a pretty good spot here as I'm already seeing a couple shops already at 14 and a half and on their way to that number. So if these betting trends on Sue, you might even see this one get up to 15 and a half by the closing number. And if you like Georgia in this spot here, you're probably at your best number right now. Now when it comes to the trends in this matchup, I really think they tend to favor the Bulldogs of Georgia. They're 3-0 straight up for the season, 2-1 ATS in those three ball games. They did have a quality win over South Carolina in a thorough drubbing of the Gamecocks. They're going up against a Missouri squad who's a little bit outclassed in almost every position on the field. And if you're into historical figures, the Tigers dropped five of their last six straight up to the Bulldogs. Now, total-wise, not sure where this one's going to open up at, but I have to imagine we may see a little over money come pouring in at some point. UJA's 5-2 and two to the over in their last seven on the road, 4-2 and two to the over in their last six against Mizzou. Meanwhile, on the Missouri uh, side of things, they've dropped 40 points on Purdue and Wyoming, respectively. So with all that said and done, I still can't make a play on the total since we have none, but I will be leaning toward the Bulldogs in this matchup here. Give me Georgia, minus 14, getting the job done against the spread. Next game, Tulane travels to Ohio State, 3.30 kickoff at Ohio Stadium. The Buckeyes are the 35-point favorites in this matchup here. Minus 25,000 on the money line. Uh, that's right, Five Dimes actually has a money line price for this one at 25,000. I don't know if that's for real or not, but anyway, Tulane's coming in at plus 9,000. At five dimes as well. And in the early going here, we're actually seeing steady and significant movement toward the Buckeyes. They open minus 34, now laying 35 big points. And with a number this high, it's really semantics on where I think it'll move. So I won't even speculate as to 
when you should place your wager and where this one will close at. It's all drivel. But one thing that's not drivel is the weather. It's going to be a nice one in the Buckeye State. 74 degrees by kickoff. Six mile an hour wind toward the north end zone. And when it comes to the betting trends, the Buckeyes have had no problem covering these big numbers. Ohio State successfully covered spreads of 35 and 40 points respectively so far in the season. And for the record, they have not had a point spread in the single digits thus far in their three contests. Now the green wave of Tulane on the other side hasn't traveled all that well in the past year. They're just one and six straight up in their last seven on the road and failed to cover the number in four out of their last six away from home as well. Tulane's averaging just 20 points of scoring for their games that were on the board this year. Ohio State's averaging 56 points in their three games on the board themselves. Should see some scoring in this one, and we should see the Buckeyes get the job done against the number. So all that said and done, I'm going to take the Ohio State Buckeyes laying the 35 points, getting the job done against the point spread. Next game, Virginia Tech travels to Old Dominion, 330 kickoff at Foreman Field. The Hokies are the 28-point favorites in this matchup here. No real surprises there. I am a little surprised that we're seeing movement toward ODU in the early going here. Vatek actually opened 28.5 down to 28 even. I don't have a real good grasp as to where this number will end up at. Could drop to 27, could get to as high as 30. I really don't know. But what I do know is that it's going to be a hot one in Ballard Stadium. 85 degrees by kickoff, 7 mile an hour wind toward the eastern boundary. Virginia Tech has successfully covered the number in their two games so far in the season. 42 point lay against William and Mary and a 7.5 point Fred, uh, spread against Florida State. Old Dominion's outclassed and outmatched in Saturday's contest. 0-3 on the year, 0-3 ATS in those three matchups. Losses to Charlotte, Florida International, and a 42-point loss to Liberty in the opener. And if you don't know much about ODU, they haven't covered the number much in the past couple of seasons either. Just 1-8 ATS in their last nine games, dating back to last season there. So with all those trends and numbers in mind, I'm going to lay the four touchdowns with the Hokies. Give me Virginia Tech laying the 28, getting the job done against the number in this one. Next game, TCU takes on the Texas Longhorns, 430, University of Texas. TCU's minus two and a half, no total posted as of yet. 77% consensus on the Horn Frogs at the moment. I think we'll see this line move toward the Horn Frogs. I'm expecting a good amount of TCU support. Wouldn't be surprised to see this one close out at three and a half to four points. Now, if you like the Longhorns to get the job done in this matchup, I think you'll be able to catch this number at the very least three points at some point during the week. And if you like them straight up at home, they're actually plus $1.15 for some money line cash in some uh, shops. So we might have ourselves some weather down there in the Lone Star State. 84 degrees and a 60% chance of thunderstorms at some point during this matchup. Six mile an hour wind blowing toward the east boundary. Now TCU's 2-1 thus far on the season. 2-0 against the spread in their two games that were on the board. They were laying 24 points when they covered over SMU. Catching 13 when they covered against Ohio State. And if you like historical trends, TCU's gone 7-3 ATS in their last 10 on the road. They've also successfully covered the number in five out of their last six matchups with Texas. And despite... The Longhorns, big win at home against USC. They still failed to cover in two out of their last three, including ATS losses against Tulsa and Maryland. And historically, the Longhorns have struggled against TCU in recent years. Just one and five straight up in their last six versus Texas Christian. One and four ATS in their last five uh, facing TCU at home. So with all those stats and trends in mind, I really think TCU should be able to get the job done. I think the only scenario that beats us would be an overtime win by one point. I'm really liking the Horn Frogs outright. Uh, I also really like them against the spread. So all that said and done, I'm going to purchase the hook, buy it down, and take TCU minus two, getting the job done. Next game, Louisiana Tech travels to LSU. 7 o'clock kickoff, Tiger Stadium. The Tigers open 21 and a half, down to 21 even. They're also the $18 favorites on the money line. 
And if you like La Tech in an upset, they're catching 22 points at five dimes plus 1150 if you like them straight up as well. Now it's going to be a warm one down on the bayou, 80 degrees a kickoff, five mile an hour wind toward the south end zone. LSU's 3-0 on the year thus far, 2-0 against the spread in their games that were on the board. Underdogs in both of those covers as well. Three-and-a-half point dog to Miami, 133-17. Double-digit 10-point dog to Auburn, beat them outright, 22-21 in that instant classic as well. Now, obviously, LSU matches up quite well with the much weaker Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. And if you like to get into past trends, this LSU squad has been covering machines over the past two seasons. 8-2 and two ATS last 10, 4-1 and one ATS last 5 at home. And thus far in the year for La Tech, they failed to cover their solo game. That was on the board. It was a 10.5 point lay against South Alabama where they failed to cover. So with all those numbers in mind, I got to feel like this LSU squad can win by three touchdowns. These guys have looked awesome so far this year. Give me the LSU Tigers, minus 21 getting the job done at home this Saturday. All right, next and final game for the show, it is going to be Wisconsin traveling to Iowa. 8.30 kickoff at Kinnick. Wisconsin's minus three in their Big Ten matchup on the road. That number did move downward already as the Badgers did open four, now down to three. If you like the Hawkeyes in an upset, they're plus $1.50 at five dimes to win it outright. And with the shock of the recent upset to BYU, I think we'll probably see a steady and consistent fate of Wisconsin till the closing number. Don't be surprised if this one gets as low as minus two by game time. And speaking of game time, could be a wet one at Kinnick this week. 65 and potentially rainy in Iowa this Saturday. 50% chance of showers in that one. And despite the early fade, as well as the ugly 0-3 ATS record thus far in the season, I really think the Badgers are going to bounce back against Iowa. They're definitely the stronger team in the trenches physically, slightly more talented in the skill positions as well. And the Badgers did get upset by a very tough, gritty BYU team who was upset-minded all week. Now, trend-wise, Wisconsin is still 11-2 ATS in their last 13 on the road, 5-0 straight up in their last five away from home as well. And head-to-head, Wisconsin is 5-1 straight up in their last six, playing on the road at Kinnick Stadium. Now, on the Iowa side of things, a little bit different story. 2-4 ATS in their last six against the Badgers. 2-4 ATS in their last six at home against the Badgers as well. So with all those stats and info in mind, I like the Badgers in a gritty one. Give me the Wisconsin Badgers minus three, getting the job done against the number. All right, folks, that is going to do it for me. But before I get out of here, I just have to remind you to check out my daily best play at patreon.com slash Brock Page. And with a documented win percentage of 60% for the entire year of 2017, you're costing yourself valuable information each and every day you're not subscribed. Packages begin at just $1.99 a month. There's also plenty of free content there as well. So once again, please feel free to hit that pause button right now. Open up your browser and just quickly check me out at patreon.com slash Brock Page. It'll only take you a few seconds. Link is in the description section below. And if you're a current patron of mine and you're watching this program right now, I just can't thank you enough. You make it all worth it. And as always, thank you for watching today's program. I hope you enjoyed all this great free information. And please don't forget to check out my daily best play at patreon.com slash Brock Page.